The human mind can occasionally convert seemingly chaotic patterns of colours and shades to form some form of recognisable image. This action is termed pareidolia. It does then provoke several questions. Why do we do this? How do we do this? Are there any consequences of this actually happening? The why does seem to be related to survival. The type of image our brains convert the fastest is to be anything regarding or resembling a human face. This makes sense to an individual's prospects of survival. Picking out a face and reading the emotion of the face to tell if the person is angry or happy is a major advantage and currently most likely to be threatened by our own species than any other animal. However, earlier in our history, picking out partially camouflaged shapes in the bushes around us also been a significant advantage. Being able to readily identify that sheep moving close to us is a deer or a tiger, just a wind, based on limited information could be the difference between life and death. The pareidolia is obviously important, but how is the brain extrapolating this limited information to form a recognisable image? It's down to how we actually process visual information in the first place. It may seem that in a normal, well-lit situation, we have a perfect image of all that's going on around us as our eyes are recording everything that's happening. This is far from the case. To start with, our eyes are really only good at seeing what's directly in front of us, basically a five degree arc. Our perception of detail starts to decline as we move outwards to the periphery of our vision. So basically, our brains maintain the image on the edge of our vision based on what we expect to be there, combined with what we saw last time we looked with our central vision, amended by any changes that our peripheral vision informs us have actually happened. This means our peripheral vision is largely our brain's guess of what the image should be. But even that five degree central arc is heavily influenced by our brain. Our vision of our surrounding doesn't just come from a single point of view. In binocular vision, our brains have to process the information the same thing from two slightly different perspectives and overlap the two images to produce a single coherent picture. It means that even the central part of our vision is being edited by our brains. So since our brains are influencing what we appear to see, this does mean that our experience will alter how we perceive new and unexpected images. It's often found in newspaper stories of people seeing the face of a religious figure or a pop icon in toast or some other familiar item. The larger this part this figure has played in the person's history, the more likely they are to recognise that face in an unusual place. The same principle that lies behind the famous Rorschach ink block test. The more familiar an item is, the larger part it plays in your life and your thinking, the more likely you are to form the ink blocks into a representation of that thing. So by showing a range of ink blocks to a person, possible find out what they might be focusing on, but it doesn't give us a clue to why they're focusing on that what their attitude might be to that image. So ink blocks can only be a basic indicator or a starting point for further investigation. Pattern recognition has also led people to see faces on the moon or Mars, claim that aliens are making, whereas in reality, all they are is a combination of the craters and hills and light just at the right angle, creating an image close enough for the human mind to then fill in the gaps and create a face.